Welcome back to the Go Engineer YouTube channel. I'm Jim Ward, and I am a PDM technical support specialist with Go Engineer. In today's video, I will cover how to set permissions in SOLIDWORKS PDM. Before we get started, make sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Permissions. Permissions determine what a person sees in PDM and what they can do. Permissions are set in the PDM admin tool. Permissions can be applied at the user or at the group level. The recommendation is to apply permissions at the group level only. That way you can place a user in a group to give them the permissions of the group. And that way you don't have to pick through the users and see just what they've been given individually if you need to change something. You can change it at the group level and that would apply to all members of the group. Folder permissions can change depending on the folder in which a file resides. State permissions apply throughout the vault and can change as a file goes through the workflow. Administrative permissions allow assignment of administrative tasks to a group. And the default PDM admin user is special. We'll talk more about him in the next slide. Let's talk about the default PDM admin user. When you create a new vault, it only has one user, and that's the default PDM admin user. This user has complete rights to administer the vault. And by default, this user has full permissions to a new state in the workflow. Do not add this user to any groups. Adding him to a group means that his permissions become limited to the permissions given to a group. And you always want him to have full permission to do everything. Be certain this user has full permissions in all states in all workflows. We sometimes have issues with states being deleted, then you can't delete it, but in that process, all users lose any access to that state, including the PDM user. So if you've in, done that, you may need to go back in and make sure that that PDM user has full access to that state again. Do not log into the vault view as the admin user when working on files. If you're doing regular work, use your own PDM account. The main reason for that is that this PDM admin user has too many permissions. You can wind up doing stuff that you really shouldn't be doing. You know, things like modifying a file that has already been released. Use this PDM admin user to troubleshoot issues, fix files, or make changes in the PDM admin tool. Also be aware that the PDM admin user will sometimes have permissions that are not assignable to other groups. PDM standard, this is especially true. When you get into PDM professional, there are some things that you can assign to other people or groups that in PDM standard, only the PDM admin user can do. All right, let's um, go over to the PDM admin tool and start looking at permissions. Here we are in the PDM administration tool. To talk about permissions, let's start by looking at one of the groups, all users. So permissions are here on the side. Notice there is administrative permissions. As the name implies, this is things that you need to have the permission for to change how PDM operates. For all users, we allow them to accept tasks to execute on a host, and they can update history comments. This is their own history comments. And if they have search that they decide they want to keep, they can save it as a search favorite. There are a lot of permissions here. As to what each one of them does, you can select the help file down here in the bottom right, and it brings up that section in the SolidWorks help file, and it talks about what each of the permissions does, and whether it is PDM professional only, or the ones that don't say that, they're for both PDM professional and PDM standard. This is true for administrative permissions. When we go over to folder permissions, notice there's two tabs up top, permissions per folder and assigned folder permissions. Permissions per folder, you can select and browse through the, the trees of folders, and by the way, if you select the top of this and drag it up, it allows you to get yourself more room in the top section to look at your different folders. And also when you have multiple changes as to where permissions change within the folder structure, 
that's where those are listed over here on assigned folder permissions. So again, permissions per folder allow you to go through the folders that are in your vault and change permissions. Assigned folder permissions keeps track of where permissions change. And again, permissions are inherited unless, it's, unless you select a folder and make changes at that level. So when we assign permissions at the root level of the vault, it applies to all folders within the vault. If you want to make a change, you have to select a folder and make changes here. You can also come over to assign folder permissions and select a folder over here and make changes. You can also add changes over here. But again, this tells you where permissions have changed within the folder structure. Since you may have thousands of folders within your structure, it's very difficult to know where permissions change without something this, like this assigned folder permissions. Now for folder permissions, to see what's here, you have to go to an individual. You may remember that I said do not assign permissions at the individual level, and I still maintain that. But if you want to go to folder permissions, and select a folder here and then select help. And by the way, when you're at a user level, you see this icon over here on the right? This tells you this person has that permission because of the group that he's a member of. But let's come down here to the help. Now this takes you to the section for permissions per folder. And it tells you what permissions are here, the folder permissions. And you can go down your list and you see which ones are PDM professional only. Notice there are fewer here that are PDM professional only. Most of them apply to both PDM professional and PDM standard. So for all users, we want them to see files before initial check-in or private state files. By the way, this is only assignable in PDM Professional, PDM Standard, you cannot assign that. Only the PDM admin can see files in private state. We want them to be able to read file contents throughout the vault, and we want them to be able to see working versions of files. As far as what a working version is, let me go over to a file that has been released before. Let's look at the history. And we can see in the history, that revision C was done at version 10. And therefore, version 10 is the released version of this file. All the other versions, 11, 12, 9, those are considered working versions. Now, revision A was released at version 8. And therefore, version 8 is also a released version. So if, that, if this box, show working versions of files is not checked, then the user will only be able to see version 10. And if they can see earlier versions, they'll also be able to see version 8. So that's a, that's a useful one. State permissions can be assigned here, but it's better to assign those in the workflow because you have a better idea as to what you're seeing. So I will cancel this. And let's go down to the workflow. Now, there are multiple workflows since this is a professional vault. I'll go into CAD files for the moment. Now, you have permissions on the work. This is a state. And these here are transitions. Transitions are how you get from one state to the next state. And these provide the paths to go from one state to another state. So if there's no transition between states, you, you cannot go directly between that state and another state. As an example from WIP, you cannot go directly down to minor repair. Now, you would click on the state to come up with the properties for that state. And then here are the permissions that are allowed in that state. You select a particular group or user on the left-hand side to see what permissions they have. If you add a user or group, as an example, let's see, editors is not listed here, then you also need to select that 
and give them some permissions. If you don't give them permissions, then PDM will remove that from the list. So for all users here in the work in progress state, we allow them to add or rename a file, read file contents, and that's it. For engineering, in this particular state, we allow them to add or rename file, allow them to overwrite the latest version during check-in. They can check out a file, delete a file, move a file, and read file contents. System administrator, notice he, uh, by the icon, this is an individual. These are groups up here. He can do everything, but we do not force him to enter version comments. Once again, we select the help and it gives us a description of what permissions are here. Something that's important on state permissions is to check this box, ignore permissions in previous states. If you don't do that, then when a file goes through other states and then comes back, it may hang on to some of those permissions that were in those earlier states. So it can cause a lot of confusion. It's best if you check this box all the time. By default, this box is not checked. And so you have to remember to go in there and, and select that box. Let's go through some of these permissions in the state. There's add a rename file, which makes sense since uh, in the work in progress state in my workflow. So icon tells me that this is the first state in the workflow. So files get do get added to the workflow in that state. Can overwrite latest ver version during check-in. Do be careful with that. I actually don't normally recommend that. Um, Checkout file is what allows you to be able to edit a file. And delete a file, again, delete in PDM is only a temporary delete. It moves it over. It actually makes a check in SQL that this file has been deleted and so it doesn't show up on searches anymore. But it's not actually gone from the vault until an admin or somebody does the next one down, which is destroy. And so be very careful with the destroy because that actually removes the file completely from your vault and from SQL and you cannot recover from that without a backup of your vault. So they have the permission to move files and if you want to force them to enter version comments when it goes through transitions, you can select that box. Of course, you want them to be able to read file contents so that they can see files in this particular state. All right, so that's um, workflow permissions. And again, the permissions that are in the workflow apply throughout the vault. Transitions, the permissions are rather minor. It's just whether or not you, you permit this particular um, user or group to make the, to be able to do that transition, whether or not they must enter state change comments. And if you don't want a single user to be able to move a file through the workflow, you would check this box. Sequential state changes. In other words, they cannot uh, go from WIP to pending approval to released, all being the same user. A different user has to go, say, from pending approval to released. Now, one thing I did want to cover while I'm talking about permissions are settings. Now, settings are different from permissions in that settings are saved at the user level. Permissions are all saved at the group level. So if you take a person and move him from one group to another, his permissions will change depending upon the group that he's a member of. With settings, that's not true. Now, settings are can be set at the group level so you can right click here and go to settings. Then it brings up this dialog here and you can set them here, but then it only copies those settings to the current members of the group. And so when you take a person and move him from one group to another, his settings do not change. They are saved only at the user level. Now, if you want to create settings that apply to all users, you can do a right click on users and choose settings. And now whenever you set these things, they will apply to all users. One of the things that I wanted to cover here is always work with latest version of files. Now, many companies find this quite useful because with this, they don't accidentally start releasing 
or sending down rev versions of files to be made. And that can save them a lot of money. Even experienced users sometimes make a mistake and they can send a down rev version. So this is very handy to select. Notice it's a solid black as opposed to a check. Solid black means that some users have this and some don't. If you want, you can select that and modify that to a check so that everyone has it. And then this allows SOLIDWORKS files. When they're opened in SOLIDWORKS, you can choose a get version and then choose a down rev version to see it in SOLIDWORKS. Notice the next two down checkout files silently without showing the checkout dialog box. I never want to do that. You always want to be very clear as to when you're checking out a file. Then try to check out all referenced files and the referencing file is checked out. That's another one that is a bad thing to check because just because you check out an assembly doesn't mean you want to check out everything the assembly references. Matter of fact, you normally don't. Under miscellaneous, the same is true with changing state. When you change state on an assembly, you don't want all of the referenced files to change state with it. And so I uncheck that box to make sure that in the transition dialog, they are not all checked. The same to is select references that are defined as drawing nodes. Now, if it only selected the one drawing that was directly referenced by the file, I could see maybe leaving this checked. But I've seen this select multiple drawings from files that are referenced and then their drawings. And so I leave this one unchecked as well. This not rebuilt warning, I've seen people spend a lot of time trying to rebuild stuff so that that rebuilt warning goes away. And so, and it's not really very useful. So I leave that one unchecked as well. On Explorer, you normally want to want to see all files. So I select that, show all files. Under local file cleanup, you do want to check that box to automatically delete local read-only files that are not part of the file vault. So local files are files normally left behind when somebody else changes a file's name or its location and you have a cache file on your system. That cache file still sits there. So it's a good idea to clean those up whenever you come across them. This local file cleanup, it only triggers when you actually browse into a folder. And so this doesn't apply throughout the vault all the time, just when you go into a folder. It checks to see if any of those files are local and read only. And if they are, then they remove them. So this is a good one to check. This miscellaneous is personal preference. So I leave those alone, whatever people like. This checkout files when the open command is executed. Again, I uncheck that one because just because you open a file doesn't mean you want to check it out. The edit command applies when you right click a file and choose edit. So I can see automatically checking it out when you do that. These are settings and these settings apply to users. They are only saved at the user level. So you may want to come through and recheck these, especially when you add new users or move users between groups to make sure that they have the settings that you like. This has been Jim Ward describing how to assign permissions in SOLIDWORKS PDM. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and leave us a comment below. If you have a topic you'd like us to cover in a future video, please also note that in your comment. Please visit our website, GoEngineer.com, for access to professional training, upcoming events, and more from your number one online technical resource. Have a great day.